The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, <clears throat> among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Many of you know that I am a huge proponent of systems thinking. I truly believe understanding systems and the way they function is vital if we are going to understand the many processes that take place within an organization or community of people, whether it is within a society, within the church, within our families, and even within our very selves. Systems thinking is the process of understanding how the actions of various people or entities within systems influence other components and affect the whole. Systems thinking can be applied to many facets of life. Our families are considered systems. Government is a system. Politics is a system. Education is a system. Healthcare is a system. We have a financial system that drives the way we live. Religion often becomes a system, and faith communities function as a system. The way we use power and authority can become a system. Unfortunately, such authority often turns into a system of domination where power is leveraged over others in a very unhealthy manner. The list of types of systems really goes on and on. Each system is often made up of multiple smaller systems composed of interconnected parts. And the connections within a system cause behavior of one part to affect all others. Every day, each one of us is a player in multiple systems as we navigate our waking hours. Some systems can be very helpful, while others can be very harmful. 
One thing we soon discover about systems is that they are created to be self-perpetuating. Consequently, it becomes very difficult to break a system, to change systemic functions, or break free from a system. And today, in John's Gospel, we are going to learn about a system. As we begin the last two weeks of our Lenten journey with another reading from the Gospel of John, we discover our focus is increasingly directed toward, Jews, toward Jesus' crucifixion and the work of the cross. The writer of John's Gospel has this very large and dramatic understanding of the work of the cross, an understanding in which the cross becomes the hour in which the Son of Man will be glorified. This hour represents the completion and fulfillment of Jesus' mission and ministry. And in today's reading, John tells us that Jesus' crucifixion judges the world and drives out the ruler of the world. Last week, in the Greek word translated as world referred to the cosmos or all of creation. However, this week, the Greek word that is translated as world is not synonymous with God's creation. Instead, it is a Greek word describing the fallen realm that exists in estrangement from God and is organized in opposition to God's purposes, in opposition to God's dream for this world. The word world in today's reading from John would better be described as a superhuman reality, a reality concretely embodied in structures, institutions, and systems that aggressively shapes human life and holds human beings captive. Today, the word we see translated as world would better be described as the system with a capital S, the system of sin. And in the Gospel of John, this system of sin is driven by a spirit or force, the ruler of the world, whose ways are violence, domination, and death. In fact, theologian Charles Campbell suggests that in today's reading, the crucifixion could be interpreted as an exorcism in which the system of sin is judged and its driving force or ruler is cast out by means of the cross. The cross of Jesus shatters the system of sin. <clears throat> On Sunday mornings, when we speak the words of confession and forgiveness, we frequently say, we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. These words describe our captivity to systems through which we, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> through which we are taken down the path of death rather than life. In our culture, Many systems hold us captive. We are held captive to the system of consumerism, and we consume and consume, all the while knowing that our consumption is killing others around the world, others who work in sweatshops so they can feed our insatiable appetites. We are held captive by hierarchies of winners and losers, systems that shape our behavior, and thinking from birth until death. We are held captive by, to structures and systems that perpetuate racism, something we are presently seeing again as crimes against Asian Americans are on the rise. We are held captive to structures and systems that perpetuate misogyny, sexism, heterosexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, nationalism, and downright hatred. 
Just note the murders in Atlanta this last week. We are held captive by myths that shape our thinking and culture, myths that promote what some call redemptive violence. In fact, theologian Walter Wink has suggested that redemptive violence is the primary myth of the system as we are trying to bring order out of chaos through violently defeating any we consider other. And we have seen a lot of that over the past year. This myth is everywhere in culture, in video games, in movies, in the rhetoric I hear spoken among people, in our response to any kind of threat, in our response to any who are unlike us. Yes, we are held captive to systems, especially the system of sin that becomes a system of domination within our very selves. And Jesus, throughout his ministry and journey to the cross, enacted freedom from systems and systemic myths by refusing to respond to the domination and violence of the system. Theologian Marcus Borg, in his book, The God We Never Knew, wrote, the point is not that Jesus was a good guy who accepted everybody, and thus we should do the same, though that would be rather good to do. Rather, his teachings and behavior reflect an alternative social vision. Jesus was not talking about how to be good and how to behave within the framework of a domination system. He was a critic of the domination system itself. In fact, Jesus' freedom from systems of domination and his rejection of violence is what distinguishes him and his way from the system of sin. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' death is not a matter of sadness. It is very different from the other Gospels. In John, it is not a matter of sadness. The cross is the purpose of his entire life. It is his mission, and his entire ministry is driven by that mission. And that cross stands before each one of us as a mirror, as Jesus exposes the system for what it is. As we look to the cross, we begin to see ourselves for who we are and the world, the system with a big S, for what it really is, the way of death. It is then that we can begin to find ourselves liberated and set free from the system's captivating ways. As we look to the cross, we are set free to die to a life that has been shaped by the system so that we can now begin to live fully into the way of Jesus, the way of eternal life, the way of life that truly matters. And as Jesus sets us free, the new covenant that Jeremiah describes in our Old Testament reading that new covenant is truly written in our hearts as God's love transforms our hearts and our entire being. Today, John's Gospel tells us Jesus' hour has finally come. The writer of John's Gospel tells us Jesus has finally come to the cross, the purpose and mission of his life. And as we continue to journey to the cross with Jesus, death is something we do not want to face. In fact, death is something we fear and do not even want to talk about. However, Jesus is taking us to the cross, taking us to die to self and to the systems that hold us captive. And he's taking us to the cross, which is that place of purpose for him, the purpose for which Jesus came. God is taking us to the cross so that we can see the act of ultimate love for all of human existence. 
It is in the cross that we discover the source of love that truly sets us free. It is the cross and the love of Christ that is shown in the cross that sets us free from the system of sin that imprisons us. And it is in the cross where we discover that this love of the crucified one is drawing all, all of humanity to God's very self. Amen.